Oh, right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of The Salt Mines. It's the second episode where I, an ex-pro gamer and current commentator and expert StarCraft player, look at a bunch of people's replays where they send in instances where their opponents hmm, maybe don't handle the emotional turmoil of one of the most competitive real-time strategy games ever so well. Uh, this one, I believe, was sent in by the Protoss player Almighty Thor in the bottom left side. We've got the Protoss player coming in there. And these guys are, of course, average Joes, by the way, for those who aren't watching. Bane is the Zerg opponent in the top right side, who's actually cheesing right now by the looks of it. That's a 13 gas 12 spawning pool, guys. This is the fastest possible uh, one base Zergling Baneling build order. So a big cheesy build coming out of Bane. Bit of a rush, and it's got a lot more APM. I was about to say, we can check the APM tab and try to guess. This could be sent in by Grand Master players who are fans of the channel and like kind of having their, you know, funny games checked out. It could also be bronze players who are brand new to the game. Now, looking at uh, Almighty Thor's APM, I would say that's about Silver League APM in the 20, 30, 40 range. Could be somewhere around there. But the build order makes a lot of sense. This is like a really solid opening. We already see a gateway go down. One chrono boost went in the probes. This is a really solid standard expand build. Meanwhile, Bane... Wait, wait, Bane, you're meant to be building a queen and link speed right now. But Bane puts a hatchery down. What? Why would you go 13 gas 12 pool, but then build a hatchery? Look at this, the lava's not getting spent. And whenever you've got three lava sitting on a hatchery, guys, the hatchery completely stops producing the lava. The whole point of going the gas in the pool this early is to be non-stop building zerglings, get the ling speed, make a baneling nest, and go for a big all-in attack. But Bane builds a hatchery and then starts just making drones. This is an abysmal build order. I don't have words. This is an absolute cesspit of a build order, this is. So, despite playing at almost three times the speed in terms of the actions per minute up there, uh, Bane's build order makes no sense. Whereas Almighty Thor playing at a ridiculously low and slow APM for how tight the build order is. This is a very tight build order. Now, he was going to go for a Nexus, but Almighty Thor saw the early pool and said, whoa, it's an early pool. I've got to build a gateway, a second gateway, a cyber core, build some zealots, wall myself off. This is like a professional response to an early pool. Because normally there'd already be Zerglings attacking you, trying to get in, your zealots would be holding them off right now. So Almighty Thor's already got to be confused doing this uh, this perfect response and be like, why hasn't he attacked yet? What's going on? So he's building Adepts now, decides, okay, I guess I'll get the Nexus and the second gas during all this. Does need to build a third pylon, but once again, guys, for a player with 40 APM, I am very impressed by how tight this response is. So like, I feel like I'm a very proud bronze to GM daddy right now. I feel like Almighty Thor has watched the Protoss bronze to GM and has studied those build orders because this is a very well executed play so far. It does hit a slight supply block on 31, which is going to halt the probes for a moment. And at this point though, I think Almighty Thor is just confused. And, and Bane did still build the Bane Nest and made Ling Speed, but that's all kicked in and you've only got four Zerglings on the map. Your first Lava Inject starting at three minutes. That could have been starting over a minute ago and only one Queen. So the production is just really bad for Bane. So even if Bane wants to go for this Ling Bane all in, which is probably still the plan as we see Zerglings building up, it could have hit by three minutes. Even two minutes 45, you could hit with your first couple of Bane Lings and about 15 Zerglings. And yet Bane, it's a minute after that almost, and you've only got 12 Zerglings out. Now, Almighty Thor's venturing across the map to try and see what the hell's going on? Why haven't you attacked me yet? And the Zerglings are going to run into it. Zerglings should be enough to take this out, but this is not enough of them. You need a handful more Zerglings. You want to have at least four Zerglings per gateway unit. I think that was only about 12 Zerglings for four gateway units, so two Zealots go down, but with the Adepts as well, they took out six Zerglings each, so 12 Zerglings go down. A great trade for the Protoss player, who's now going to see an expansion with almost no drones on it. One of the Adepts does get surrounded but the other one teleports forward she's going to get rid of one of these only two drones on this expansion and at this point even though you lose these units and oh no oh oh almighty oh, thor accidentally rallied a stalker out here ouchie ouchie that's not good but realizes okay i don't have anything in the wall i'll wall off and i mean i think almighty thor's got to feel good you see you've got six probes on the natural your opponent only has one you know you're ahead in economy Protoss versus Zerg, that's very good. Anytime you're up in the economy, that's great. A Stargate is building a Void Ray. And oh, oh my god, Bane is going all in. Oh no, and Almighty Thor canceled the pylon in the wall. Bane doesn't know about it though. The Overlord is not on top of the pillar where it could have been watching all this. Bane could have walked right in, but missed the opportunity because the Overlord wasn't on the pillar. Stalkers are now there. Now these Banelings could still bust in, but they need to blow up all at the exact same time. They need to blow up all at the exact same time. And they go in two, three, four at a time. And because of that, the shield battery got a lot of healing off. Battery overcharge will go down, but uh-oh, you need to actually manually tell a battery to heal a building unless it's a, a photon count in a fighting building. 
Ah, it doesn't quite micro that in time, so the Cybercore does go down. Nonetheless, though, the Adept and the Stalker are doing pretty good work. Almighty Thor desperately trying to wall off. Now, that's not a full wall. Units can still trickle in. Zergling's running into the main base. Almighty Thor's in trouble, but does do an almighty F2 for the Almighty Thor. Pulls the Void Ray back, and with the help of the probes turning to fight, not a single probe went down. Not a single probe went down. If Almighty Thor can just wall this base off, the Void Ray will be able to defend. Ah, Almighty Thor, get back in that wall, mate. Almighty... Wait... He's going to build a third base. Almighty Thor's like, got to continue the build, bro. Let's take a third. No, no, no. You're still being all in. Bane is, it was going all in. He's trying to transition now. But you can see that that attack needed to do crippling damage. It needed to do massive damage because it's down 20 workers. Coming in with another wave of Zergans to try to buy time, but hitting the Stargate is definitely not going to get it done. Oh, that's not, that's not going to be value. Goes into the mineral line. Could get some probes. All right, does get a probe there. Not bad. The probes, though, running away. The Adepts and the Stalker is going to fight this one out. The Zerglings get aggroed onto that. And once again, only a single probe just went down then. Now more Zerglings running. They should go for these probes. Not the Cybercore, mate. Not the Cybercore. It's the tankiest structure in the wall, mate. Oh my god, the Zerglings having no idea what to go after. And actually, those units accidentally attacked the plate. Both of these players are just tripping over their feet in the chaos. Two more drones start up. So Bane is still making Zerglings, but kind of making two drones at a time every 30, 40 seconds. This is still not even really a transition. This is like limping your way towards a, a macro game. It's, it's still building queens, but only off one hatchery. Spreading some creep as well. But Almighty Thor is up at almost double the workers. Adding a Twilight Council, making more air units. Uh, could definitely take more gases. Has a third base coming up. And Bane is just drastically behind from this. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's an opening where I don't know <laughs> what Bane's plan was. <laughs> but... It was, uh, let's just say it wasn't the most well-tailored build order, whereas Almighty Thor on the other hand is playing very standard, clearly watches pro play. Whereas I think Banes uh, probably learnt from their, their cousin Gary, who, you know, kind of acted like he knew how to play the game, but, but had never actually played online before. Um, oh, Oracle does take out a bunch of these Zerglings, but the Nexus does fall. That's a good snipe. At least you keep the Protoss on two base now. And Almighty Thor on two base is going to struggle to keep on up with Bane. Bane pulling the Zerglings back, and it's going to make more more Zer, more, Zer, more Zerglings. Okay, yep. All right, guys. I think I think we might have figured out Bane's range as a player, incapable of holding the drone key down without being like, build a few more Zerglings. And how many queens have we had queued up? Why? Why was there five queens queued up on one hatchery? I think there might have been because this queen has been built. This hatchery has been putting queens for the last like four minutes, and this hatchery hasn't built one only the first queen it built okay spire we're gonna try and go two base muta oh my god but still at 30 drones you need to bloody get some workers and get some ejects going mate oh just ah uh, not enough fundamentals i think on the other hand almighty thor has mastered one of the most important skills as a protoss player i'm not even being facetious i know people often think i'm making fun of protoss when i'm not throwing down a billion gateways just with a shift click one of the most useful skills this is going to allow you, with charge coming in, to make a lot of zealots. Zerglings suck against zealots. Banelings are good against them, but even then you need to get a big juicy hit in the middle of a lot of zealots for it to really be super worth it. So this is just a good macro transition. It has the third base with plenty of workers. They're long distance mining for now, but once it's up, they'll start mining. And it's not taking the gases on the natural, so it's really super zealot focused as Almighty Thought moves across the map for a big attack. Third hatchery's just gone down. Finally up to 40 workers is Bane. Bane's going to move forward with some queens and zerglings. Is this meant to be a queen zergling attack? What am I looking at? No attack move for any of the units. They just walk right past, dying as they go. Oh no, Bane now gets a good surround on these zealots, but the other zealots and adepts come back, and that's going to make it a very bad trade for the zerg. These zerglings are getting wrecked. You can see in the units lost tab in the top left, almost a 2 to 1 kill ratio there for Almighty Thor. Well, almost 10 to 1 in terms of unit count but in terms of value almost two to one for the protoss player you can see just how cheap zerglings are compared to what, what have we killed cybernetic score nexus yeah few zealots few adapts few stalkers each i mean a stalker costs as much as seven zerglings in terms of total resource cost so definitely something you could look at 14 banelings are going uh to be morphed in right now hatchery goes down bane with a nice cancel needs to get these banelings in the center of the zealots oracle Flew in there, but the Queens managed to shut it down. No muters are out just yet. Two muters are on the way, but they're not here just yet. Banelings, go! Oh, and the Banelings blow up every single Zealot. They'll take out those Adepts as well. Queens might be able to defend this on their own as long as you just drop some Transfusers. You've got full energy Queens. 
Oh, there we go. One transfuse. More, 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 more. You need more transfuses. No, no, no. The, the weak one. Not the full hit point, Queen. That took two, two damage from Splash. Oh, no. The transfuses aren't going down either. What are we doing, Bane? Oh, no. Okay, looks like Bane's going to get overwhelmed. Even yet, unupgraded Stalkers rallying across the map. Not Almighty Thor's best move. And actually, Almighty Thor is kind of struggling with the anti-air because it's still only on the initial two gas geysers. But despite that, it feels like there's just only a trickle of units coming out for Bane. If Bane pulls all the drones, could defend this, but it's probably in a pretty hard spot. Needs to drop some more transfusers. There are seven transfusers sitting there, or four right now. And oh, here we go. So let me get this BS straight. You could, you could bloody all in me. Lose that BS. And then macker up, by the way. Yes, I'm throwing some substitute words in here. Then macker up. <laughs> and defend my counter. How do, how do, because because bloody Protoss so OP. Almighty Thor's like, uh, when did I all in you, bro? <laughs> uh, your adept BS harass before my Banus came up, dumbass. Oh my lord. Actually, I don't think that was even dumbass. Protoss is busted as F. What are you talking about? What world are you living in? Literally zero seconds into this game, and you, you, you're you the one who committed to an all-in. Look at this. I've gone back in the replay. What are we seeing here? 12 spawning. You literally, the first thing you did was build a combat structure, a spawning pool, so you can unlock Zergling tech. Now you're going for gas as well. Excuse me, who all in here? The Adepts? When did those Adepts hit? Uh, excuse me. It was two Adepts, and he said... It, the Adept BS before my Bailing Nest was up. Number one, why would you need a Bailing Nest to deal with two Adepts and two Zealots wandering across the map? I wouldn't even call this a harassment. He said, you, you BS Adept harass. This wasn't a harassment. This was a confused Protoss player going, why is the guy who went 13, uh, 12 pool 13 gas not attacked yet? Uh, let's go over there and figure out what's happening. This literally was a stroll across the map to try and see what the hell your opponent was doing. <laughs> and get this in mind, the Bailing Nest finished before this even left the Protoss base. <laughs> and Bane's here like, Yo, you BS, Protoss all in? This is an all in, guys. I just want you to remember this, guys. In the minds of some players out there, two Zealots and two Adepts at the 3 minute 30 mark is an all in. Amazing gaming once again. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go straight into the next game. Actually, wait, on top of that thought, hold a second, hold on a second. Before we go to the next game, hold on. Not only that, you called that an all-in, and you, you you accused him of all-inning, and failing it, and then still being able to win. You're the one who failed the all- This was the- you, you, you just did a really late crappy all-in, and you missed an opportunity to run- you could have ran straight into the undefended wall and probably won the game, but you, you wasted your time, because you didn't even have your overlord on the pillar. You're the one who did the all-in? What are you talking about, mate? Oh! So inefficient, my god. <laughs> ah. So Bane is like, how dare you? How dare you all in me with those two adepts and two zealots? Uh, uh, I cannot comprehend, guys. Let's go into the next game. Oh, right, all right, all right. We're going to go into game number two. This one was sent in by, obviously, another Protoss player against another Zerg. Oh, I sense a pattern here. I sense a pattern here. The YouTube comments are going to be spicy on this one, aren't they? This is obviously in the top right. He's not building a single probe yet. It's going 12 pylon. Oh no, that's a 13 pylon. Oh, interesting. And in the bottom left, I, I talk trash going for a 14 pool. No, no, no. That was a 12 pool. I talk trash going for a 12 pool, but it was seven seconds late, I think. All right, because these drones all built after it. Yeah, it's a 12 pool. 12 pool, but a few seconds late on the 12 pool there. Maybe, maybe not seven seconds late, maybe three or four. But still not, not too bad. So this is I talk trash. The Zerg player in the bottom left side. This is Beckett Industries, one of the smallest maps in the pool. A 12 pool could be very hard to stop here. Gateway though is pretty well timed, but obviously not chrono boosting probes or anything. And is now putting a forge down as well. Is it an aggressive or a defensive forge? I do not know. I think obviously might just be expanding with cannons, um, which is usually not the greatest, but there are a few GM players who do it. Now, I talk trash is going for a proxy hatchery while building an Evo chamber and two gases. Now I had things to say about the Zerg's build in the last game, but this one, I can't believe I'm gonna say it, might be even worse. Once again, no queen building is on 13 out of 30 supply 
and is going for an Evo chamber and two gas geysers when you bet you don't even have enough mineral drones. And he's completely halted the production and is like, yeah, well, I've got to save money for my hatchery. Holy crud. This is worse than Florencio's first day playing Zerg, for context. For those who don't know Florencio, he's a sewer mermaid. And you might wonder, uh, isn't it hard to play StarCraft in the sewer? Yes, yes it is. He's, he's always, his scaly hands are always sliding back and forth across his Xbox controller. It's very tough for him to, to do the macro. And, and yeah, even his very first games with Zerg, I think were a little cleaner than this. This is a nasty build order for my talk trash. Now, Obviously, his build order is kind of fantastic because this reminds me of my good friend Mick. Shout out to Mick out there. Um, I always tell the story of how we played 2v2s. I was Zerg, he was Terran back in the early days of Wings Liberty. His job was to wall off and he, he left three openings in a wall off. Now, for those who don't know, this is this is not a wall off. This is, this is a giant opening that you would need two stalkers to block. And also there's a, a, a normal opening over here. So th this is, is not safe. Also, we've built a forge but we haven't actually built any cannons, nor scouted, so... And now we're building a second layer of wall-off, which is also too wide for us to wall-off with anything other than an Archon. And now we're building a pylon in front of our... My god, we are watching a Silver League game if I've ever seen one. I say Silver League, because people are like, well, don't you mean bronze? Kind of, this one's looking a little bronzy, but they're both doing enough things. It's just that they're kind of weird orders of things, I guess. That's why I'm... The reason I don't say bronze is because bronze is so rare. Like, you very rarely come across a bronze player in the wild. It's a very small league because anyone who keeps playing in bronze league more than 10 or 15 games usually, you know, gets promoted relatively quickly. Most people, they're not, they're not, I'm not saying they don't exist, but there's a lot more players I find in silver and then it goes up again in gold in terms of the numbers of players. Because if you, you stick around and play a lot, usually you get better and climb up those ranks. So, you know, a lot of people stay in gold literally forever, platinum literally forever, diamond literally forever. But, um, yeah, silver and bronze, you know, more of the uh, the stairway, stairway ones. So there's two spines and a spore in the main, and we're going plus one melee and ling speed while banking uh, an ungodly amount of gas and also droning up a corner base. So I talk trash here is, 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 is certainly doing things. Uh, obviously, meanwhile, is making lots of adepts in the Twilight Council. But obviously is actually chrono boosting probes, building probes, rallying them. So obviously, definitely working forwards in the game. I think what we're going to have to do to get inside the mind of these players, since I know a lot of my audience is in Platinum League, Diamond League, or used to be high level but doesn't have time to play anymore. I'm basically GM in knowledge, I just don't have time to practice. Uh, let's get into the mind of these players. So if we watch first person, right now we're on I Talk Trash's camera, okay? So if we look over here... There's a second Evo chamber and a Baneling Nest. Because remember, guys, when you're on 24 drones, that's a huge economy. That's almost enough workers to take workers from your main base and send two of them to your expansion, which pretty much might as well go double upgrades. Probably go Ultralisks as well, right? Also, didn't take the natural expansion. Took one over here. So, so we're kind of just doing things in a really random order as I talk trash. Meanwhile, neither player has scouted or interacted with the opponent at all. So I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen when these two players interact, right? Because if you don't even scout or interact or check what's happening for five minutes in the game, I have a, a little feeling you're going to be a little nervous when that interaction finally happens. So obviously it's shading into the natural and is like, there's no natural here, I'm confused. <laughs> it's going to be greeted by spy crawlers at the main base. We've got a range upgrade coming in for some reason. The spine's coming in, the adept's actually focused down one drone, two drone. Holy crap, obviously just focused down three drones. Almost even got a fourth one. Oh, it was four drones. Wow. Damn, that was micro, bro. I'm impressed. And he's going more adepts and is going to go five gate arc on after this. 38 pros versus just the 28 of the Zerg. I talk trash. Trying to macro off bases that are in all sorts of corners. We've got to do a control group check as well, guys. So no control groups for either player is, is what I'm getting at here. Yeah, neither player has control grouped a single structure. Oh my god. I'm, I'm not even kidding, guys. I'm not even kidding. I keep pressing the button to toggle the overlay, and it's not showing anything. And that means neither of them has control grouped a single unit or structure. Which means these guys are having to hop around and click on everything they do. Oh my god. Yeah, look. Look at this. So he jumps to that base, builds some drones, jumps to this base, selects the hatchery, builds some, some zerglings. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, guys, the idea of doing this, to me, it's like imagining trying to run a race while standing on my hands. 
Like, it's just so exhausting the way they're playing. Like, there is so much more manual clicking and moving around the screen. So even though, obviously, I play a lot faster than these guys, the idea of playing with the techniques they're using is so inefficient. It's like a chef watching someone try to use a completely dull blade, you know? You're trying to cut with a butter knife, cut through, like, a, a piece of raw meat with a butter knife. It's like, oh, why? Why do you hate? Why do you guys hate yourselves? Not a single control group? Really? Not even for the next eye? All right, we're gonna go to Obvious Lee's camera now. This is some Bronze League hero stuff. I love it. So you can see that, yeah, clicks the Nexus and is clicking the pro button. Probably not using even the hotkeys to build units. Clicks the other Nexus. Now scrolls down, boxes the adapts, and sends them across the map. Wow. So for those who are wondering, right, often you could be looking at your adapts and you could just select the Nexus by not having to go back, but you just press a button on your keyboard, say number four. You press number four, selects both next eye, you press your probe hotkey, it might be like E, you just go e, 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 e a few times, or you hold the E key down, bam, it queues up like five or ten probes, just like that. And you don't even need to look away from managing your army. And then if you're at home and you're doing some stuff, maybe you're chrono boosting your charge, you can just double tap army group one, which you've put your army on, and it'll zoom to them. It'll jump you here just by tapping on your keyboard. So watching these players who are just like, okay, we've done one adept pressure, and then we're just not interacting for the rest of this game. Like the Zerg did one ling run by and killed a shield battery. This is glorious because they're both going to have so much time to recover from any damage that either player does to them. Now, obviously, he's going to run in with a big adept pressure eight minutes into the game. So it's a big adept, adept army coming in. This is very late in the game, eight minutes in. So uh, it's, it's I, I guess, I don't know if I'd call this a harassment, a timing attack. I, I honestly don't know what you call things at this league because... You know, it's it's eight minutes in the game, and it's the same number of glaive adepts that a pro would hit with it at four and a half, five minutes. So uh, it's, it's an attack. Oh, banelings! You got to spread, guys. Let's see the micro spread, 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 spread. You've got to spread out, spread out. No, no, no! Don't just run in a clump. Don't just no. You got to spread, spread, Leia, spread them, spread them. <laughs> well, the banelings did not actually get that good a hit. I think they manually. I think I thought Trash was manually detonating those Banelings rather than just A-moving or clicking them on the, on the adepts. Oh my god, it's not a good trade at all for the Zerg. These adepts could come in and do more damage. The problem for the Protoss is that there's a Spire about to finish and Muters are a nightmare for players at this MMR. The adepts are going to come in, they clicked one drone, but now they're just fighting the Spine Crawler, which will easily dispatch of these uh, adepts. That is an issue. So it looks like that will get defended. Back at home, more Adepts, Stalkers, and Archons all being added into the mix. How many gateways we got? Eight, nine gateways. Very nice. 45 probes are up. Four spine crawlers building right now. I talk trash as I got to defend the main base, bro. It still has this hidden corner base up over here as well. Is getting triple Evo chamber upgrades on a 30 drone economy. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh. Oh, I've watched so many low-level Terran games in the last six months, and I've watched so few low-level Zerg vs. Protoss matches that aren't just, like, cannon rushes that this is really floating my boat. This is like... Oh, I forgot that this sort of StarCraft existed. This is great. Uh, obviously, it does get that base kill, and overall seems to just be building way more stuff than I talk trash. I think the power of building stuff may be a game winner in this one. Three Banelings gonna roll in, more slow Banelings. Oh man, Baneling speed is so useful. These Adepts actually mostly die to that. And there is a wall of spines, especially if the Queen drops some Transfuse. I bet you, I talk trash doesn't know how to Transfuse. There's no way, right? Let's watch for it. Transfuse? No, two spines go down and the Queen does go down as well. Hydras are gonna be popping out. Now those Hydras don't have the two upgrades that make them useful units. They don't have Groove Spines or Muscular Augments, so they will be struggling. Half of the army is just standing there, but what? Obviously, what are you doing? Obviously he's gone home to build Mass Gateway, Nexi, random cannons on the edge of the map. <laughs> now the other units do eventually aggro on in there, but they're only fighting, two of them are fighting a sporting pool right now. They're like, we don't think their kids deserve to have a swim. Yeah, screw their screw their swimming pool. Let's burn it to the ground. We'll burn their swimming pool down. Yeah, that'll be that'll be awesome. Yeah. Now it looks like obviously he's won this game, but I wouldn't. I, I've watched enough low-level games at this point. I'm not going to call it because a hidden base might actually break the Protoss player's brain. Protoss player is not building probes. Obviously, has not really done much else. 
I thought trash is building a lurker den and a hydra den, and I mean, are you actually going to know how to deal with lurkers is, is the big question. Do you know how detection works? Obviously, probably has used detection before, but being forced to use it against lurkers, a really high tier unit, something that you just might have no experience with. And it looks like some of their upgrades will finish the plus two range. It's going to finish in a few seconds. The stalkers stopped attacking it, but nope, dies just before it finishes. It looks like melee and carapace upgrades will kick in just before they do go down. Very nice. Meanwhile, we've got extra bases up, but the probes have not transferred. And remember, there is still only one robo that can build detection, but random cannons on the top left of the map because I'm not sure what they're defending. But I guess there's a cannon here, so that's something. Uh, obviously, is going to be moving through the rest of that base. Eight lurkers morphing. So yeah, this is it. I talk trash is going to go for a desperation. Eight lurker all in. No drones rebuilding. No extra hatcheries hiding. It's just like, all right, this is it. Make it or break it, baby. Now, obviously, is making more stalkers, and stalkers do suck at fighting against lurkers. Zealots much better, and they do have charge and plus three attack. So. Shout out to Obviously for actually getting a lot of upgrades in tech in this game. Storks and Zelts are running on forward. Those Adepts starting to take a fair bit of damage. The Spire goes down. Sorry, the Overlord's starting to take a fair bit of damage. And the workers are all just gathered up and... Wait, it's not an all-in? Oh my god, I talk Trash is trying to re-drone on one base with Lurkers. No. Is Obviously going to walk the whole army into this? Oh no. Hydra upgrades are making right now. I talk Trash try to just make Overlords... On one base and oh my god oh sorry guys uh wow okay that one didn't even get censored on my screen dot's gonna uh, no doubt have blurred that out for you guys but uh let's just say that yeah i talk trash throwing out some homophobic slurs uh well uh adepts do go down there i talk trash uh does defend the adepts oh no no, no don't go up there obviously don't go up there obviously don't go up there you don't have the observer yet don't go up there obviously don't go up there uh oh, oh no, I talk trash used the insult you into making a terrible play maneuver. Oh no, it was highly effective. The insult you into making a terrible play maneuver. Oh no. Uh, run, coward. <laughs> the player on one base lurker is like, yeah, I got this game now. Hey, dickhead. <laughs> this is such a game. I love it. Oh my god, he's gonna counterattack and kill a base. Alright, all right, what else we got? And there's no units building right now. Obviously, didn't transfer probes, remember, guys, and has spent all the money building Nexus! Nexi, which have not been cancelled, and moving in with like two stalkers versus eight lurkers. That's not how you do it, obviously. Oh no, obviously. Obviously, has so much gas. Has a Templar Archives, just needs to make like 15 Archons in the main base, and then we'll be fine. Just spend your gas, and you'll be fine. Stop rallying probes to this base. Make Archons in the main base. Oh no, he's warping in Zealots on top of the workers. I told you guys. I told you guys. Even though obviously probably knows how detection works, has no experience doing it and says, Ouch. Ouch, I think they mean. You rushing bitch, says I talk trash. I talk trash is complaining right now, but obviously for being a rushing bitch. Wait, obviously he's like, Wait, you mean you or me? Guys, wasn't this a game where at five minutes neither of them had even scouted the opponent? How is a rush even possible in a game where neither player even sees any of the enemy's units until past the five minute mark? I don't think the logic's holding up. That being said, I talk trash does seem to be winning the game. And we've got to warp in zealots elsewhere. Yes! Obviously he's figuring it out. I'm on obviously his side, obviously. Because obviously. On obviously on Oh, I didn't even realize that's the name. Obviously. Uh, I'm really fast, guys. I I'm I'm really, really fast, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. What can I say? Uh, you are on me, lol, says I talk trash. Obviously, I'm... God, now it's gonna get me, isn't it? So basically, the Protoss player, I'm on his side because he's not being a dickhead, whereas I talk trash is. Um, make some adepts. Okay, so, so I talk trash is like, make some adepts. <laughs> you already used them to rush me. You did... Was it three adepts came in at 520 and killed three drones, three or four drones, I think. I think that was the, the attack. Maybe that's what the rush is that he's talking about. Now, Zealots could jump on this from both sides and kill it, but the problem is that, that Obvious' uh, economy is really weak and those Lurkers can now hit it from the low ground. It's going to have to move to that Nexus over to the left side. The Zealots going to go across for a counterattack, but there's plenty of Hydras up. Guys, I can't believe I talk Trash has made this comeback. I always talk about how comebacks are way more possible than you think, even in Grandmaster League, and I've shown some disgusting ones over the years. But dude, the lower you go, the more crazy it is. You thought you had me, LMAO! 
Now, guys, I, I do think if you just make a DT shrine, as obvious, uh, you can still win. Or if you just pull all your probes to that base over there, there's still there's still a shot at victory here. But after throwing the zealots away, maybe not. And I do think trash talk is actually highly effective at lower levels. We saw it obvious throw the entire army away after getting called names. I talk trash is you ain't shit, you ain't shit, yeah. Oh my god, I can't. Are you actually proud, dude? That's, yep, that's obvious. I, the bonus player is like, I know, dude, I'm really bad at this game. I barely know what I'm doing. Oh, it's such a shame. So, hot tip for bonus players whenever you do find yourself in a situation like that, you really always want to be making archons when you're low on minerals and high on gas. And this also just reminds us of how it's good to macro behind, but actually moving your workers from your main down to your third. And like in this game, they were all long distance mining on this base when this base was finished and they could have been mining. So, obvious has made some big mistakes here. And, um, too easy! Oh my god, I told Trash. This is like that modern generation of gamer. If anyone's played any FPS games in the last few years, you might have, uh, you might have known them. Even in the old days, if you played console, you, you'd be familiar. Um, uh, people telling you about their, uh, activities with your mom. Well played, says obviously. But obviously, it's chrono boosting probes. Trying to build up the Zealot count. Now, Zealots beat Hydras one-to-one. -one. And remember, it is only one base economy. So I talk Trash has actually completely stopped building. And it just says, don't rush me like a bitch. Hold on a second. Don't rush me like a bitch. Okay, this is like round two of, of the last game. I didn't. This is obviously, it, it really is round two. Can, can we just hold on a second? We, we're going to pause this. Okay, okay. Let's define a couple of terms quickly. Number one, what is a rush? A rush is a piece of noob terminology that doesn't really mean anything and is not used by anyone who's actually an experienced StarCraft player. It's like literally a rush is your opponent attacking you before you were ready for it. But realistically, it doesn't really describe what's going on. What you want to say instead is it's a one base proxy strategy if you're building something outside their base. It's a one base all in. It's a 13 gas 12 pool, fast as possible, Ling Bane all in attack. It's the fastest two adepts coming out of proxy gateways, hitting me right bang at two minutes in the game that I'm absolutely unprepared for. Those are all examples of what we could actually define as a proper rush, right? But if your opponent wanders across the map at the five minute mark with three adepts, it is not a rush. On that note, let's continue the game. Uh, I didn't all in. I didn't, I didn't rush. I just went in with some adepts. So you were wide open. It, it wasn't even quick. Okay, so obvious is actually explaining. Adepts in two minutes. Yeah, not at all. Two minutes? It was five minutes. I swear. With the timing on me doing... I hop out to break it down. I hop back in and he... Oh, I talk trash. Literally contradicts himself right then. It was five minutes, dummy. And as he says the completely false statement, he runs the lurkers into the cannon providing detection and every single zealot. The observers weren't even there. If they just clicked on the cannon and killed it, there was no detection. I talk trash throws away the entire army. What a dummy. But has so much money. And now I talk trash is like, I guess I should macro and goes to build two hatcheries. Oh my god. Uh, this game just reset. Oh my god. Literally, every single bit of I Talk Trash's APM was being spent on just gloating rather than methodically doing it. Are you going to cry about it now? You're the one who just lost your army. Are you? <laughs> to be fair, that's actually a very common thing with these sort of players, right? These sort of shit talking players. They, they often, if they feel something, they'll project it onto you, right? In this case, it's like, you're going to cry now. <laughs> it's over. And it's like, I think it's because on some level, there's one tiny small part of his brain that's intelligent. <gasps> no attack move! Half the, a bunch of Hydras died before the Hydras even turned to defend themselves. Oh my god. Doesn't have muscular augments as well, so these Hydras are quite slow. But the Zealots pull back. The Zealots are going to have to mass up if they want to take this. Cry, baby. It's over. Quit. Cry, baby. But your opponent's barely said anything. He's literally just explained calmly and coolly how you're wrong. And you're going, you're a crybaby. You're a crybaby. You, why are you so emotional? Stop shouting. Stop shouting. It's like, uh, this is just the point. This uh, detached from reality and then some. Unfortunately for obvious, obvious mineral economy is back up a little, but it's just outnumbered, dude. I, I don't think the Zealots are going to be able to win this fight. There's like 10 more Hydras coming. The Hydras uh, do take out over there the Warp Prism as well. And... 
This is just going to be too many Hydras. If those Hydras go across the map, it's two to one. But for some reason, he's run into his main base. I talk trash, leaving the expansion completely undefended. Obvious is going to run in, finds the drone transfer, shreds the economy. If he gets on the Hydras, that would be huge as well. If he can fight just those Hydras on their own, that would be massive. More Zealots coming across the map. The Hydras trying to get back there, but every drone's gone down. The expansion's going to go down as well. Like I said cry about it. Yes, you already stated it. He stopped engaging. You're talking to yourself, you absolute nincompoop. What are you doing? He's like, well, my name's I Talk Trash. I could have won the game, but now I'm realizing that I could have won the game, so I'm going to talk more trash, and I'm going to try and project into thinking you feel better. You could recall these zealots. That'd be sick. You could take the fight. It's a good angle for the zealots. Oh, oh my god, these zealots are trading so well. Zealots are way cheaper than Hydra's guys, and yet he kills almost every single Hydra there, despite being outnumbered. And the economy's gone. The gas is almost completely mined out. There's only three mineral patches. There's still 15 Hydra's and there's no Zealots right now. But if obviously pulls back and fights with these cannons, just defends this base in the top left, could be able to rebuild. It's trying to build more gateways right now and another Nexus. The observers will see these Hydra's coming for the counterattack right now. This is a scary moment in this game. Keep crying. He hasn't said anything, you monkey. You absolute monkey, I talk trash. Oh my god. Keep, keep, keep crying, bro. Just keep crying, keep complaining. Just keep trying to use your words to win rather than your skills. I mean, this is uh, ridiculous. You, you literally got gifted the most easy comeback of a lifetime. And then you ran 20 Hydralists to the corner of the map for no reason. And also, you ran your Lurkers down there. For, uh, this is just literally obvious gave you a comeback on a platter and you've managed to throw it right back i this this really backs up my theory that low level players bronze and silver are not actually trying to win the game it's like a kid who's so starved for love he doesn't even want to win he's playing he just he just wants to play he's like dad just play he, he'll literally they'll let their dad win the game it's not the other way around normally it's the dad letting the kid win the game so he feels good it's the other way around they they are actually letting their dad win the game just so he agrees to play with them again. And that really is kind of what it's been like this game, isn't it? They've both taken turns just throwing the ball back and forth. They're like, yeah, yeah. Except there's also some toxic shit talk in there, which is what kind of confuses that whole analogy and metaphor and makes it not really make sense, does it, pig? Yes, you are right, other pig. I mean, uh, internet comment, I'm uh, interacting for sure. Uh, anyways, uh, Stalker's Walk again, obviously, is going to catch seven more Hydra's problem. Cancel them, cancel them, cancel them. Oh, no. And they're all on Rally. They're all on Move Command. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 ow, 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 I talk trash is like, it's fine. I'll just rebuild over here now. Oh, he's making Lurkers again, though. Oh, no. Lurkers could be a problem. But honestly, I just feel like if the Lurkers are burrowed, obviously, Probably is going to struggle to sync up the observers going over the top and the ground units. But if the lurkers are unburrowed and move into the Protoss units, the Protoss units will do the job on their own. There's just so many more of them now. And you've still got that mineral line up. This mineral line's doing okay. Uh, there's actually a good gateway count. Eight gateways. Stalkers are the worst possible unit here against the lurkers. They're not bad versus the Hydralisks, but Zealots would probably be preferable. They're a lot cheaper. Obvious is like, dude, where is your base? What's going on? I guess I'll keep expanding, keep macro. How is this game still going? Oh my, are you going to rebuild from here? Seriously, dude? You have nine drones. It was nonsensical for you to rebuild on this base T 10 minutes ago. This, this, what are you? Man, sometimes people say StarCraft's a stressful game. Remember, guys, if you lose your first 10 or 15 games on the ladder, you're very quickly playing people at this MMR. Are you telling me this is stressful? I mean, maybe the shit talk is, but let's be real. That's a small minority of the games. The lurkers are there. Watch out. There's no observer here. Oh, no. Obvious. Don't go in there. <laughs> Once again, attacking into lurkers. Stop it. Pulls back. Pulls back. Pull all the way back, please. And now he's building adepts. No, don't build adepts. Adepts are even worse than stalkers, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> There's so many more Protoss that it might not matter. They take out one lurker, two lurkers. Can they get number three? Number three goes down. The Hydra's fall, and the last Lurker is not going to be enough. Oh my god. What an absolute disaster of a StarCraft game. This makes both, both makes me kind of upset that people play StarCraft like this, and on the other hand, so happy. Because it really gives us such a breadth of experience, you know? The Spinecrawler is going to be allowed to finish by the looks of it. Obvious is making more Adepts right now, guys. Stick to Zealots past the early game. Adepts are... Only really a specialty harassment unit, not, you know, you shouldn't really be using them as your core army. 
uh, in the late game. Bro, you need a life, like, to be this much of a bitch. Pathetic! That last line, I mean, you could tell. Obvious took, I talk trash his soul there. You know at the point where they bring out a line like that? Bro, you, you need a life, like, you know? To be this much of, of a bitch? Pathetic. Oh my. Is it? Please, if you guys out there have games that are anywhere near this ridiculous, please share them with me. Please. <laughs> Info is down below in the description. Please send your replays in. If you guys have people who are just weird and crazy and throwing out outlandish, strange and bizarre rage. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. A big thanks, but just before we go, to Max and Modern Tone, Colonel SC and everyone else on the Patreon. Check out the Patreon in the description below if you want to go above and beyond to support the channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye and good night.